perspective, I believe most manufacturers in Germany are imbibing new technologies to create the new edge. Um, thank you. A very good question, uh, Mrs. Yamani. Uh, let, let, let me just say a few words on the budget first, uh, Mrs. Yamani. Uh, I think uh, if you look at the budget 22-23, Union Budget 22-23, one could say in a way it is continuation of the budget that was presented in 2021. Now, if we see the last two years, actually, I think for the first time in history of manufacturing, you had uh, supply was impacted, demand was impacted, and workforce was impacted. So I think never has it happened before that all three aspects were impacted. And what made it very different, it was not only an impact in a particular region or a country, but it was a global impact that hit us. So certainly the budget should also be viewed with the aspect that we have come out of very difficult times, as we know with the impact of uh, the COVID in India, our GDP contracted by around 7.3% last year. Now, India had a very strong recovery. After the first lockdown, we recovered, we had a very strong, almost a V-shaped recovery. Then we got again hit by the second wave, and due to that, again, the economy took a hit. However, after the second wave, I think, again, we have seen a very strong recovery, and that talks about the resilience of the Indian industry. So what was required, there was a lot of expectation of, from this budget. We were coming out of this pandemic. There are state elections that are happening in five states. Uh, so how would the finance minister do the balancing act? In that way, I must say it has been a very pragmatic, a very balanced budget where all the important aspects, we were looking at growth, we are looking at job creation, and we are looking at government spending. So all three aspects in some way or the other have been captured in this budget. And I would say it is a growth-oriented budget. As the earlier speakers have also mentioned, the spending in infrastructure, that is certainly going to boost the Indian economy, because if we see our last two years, actually it has been the government spending that has really helped to propel the GDP growth in India. And with the continuation of this government spending, I think this gives a lot of confidence as well as possibility. The core sectors, for example, when we are talking about infrastructure development, the core industries, cement industry, steel industry, capital goods industry, all will be benefited by the spending. So I think it augurs very well for the Indian economy. And looking at the perspective from Germany or the foreign investors now, I think certainly if you look at the PLI schemes, the Indian government came with the production linked incentive schemes. And this budget has also enhanced, especially when we are talking about the solar cell modules. Almost I think 19.5 thousand crores have been allocated for this. So the PLI will help to develop the manufacturing industry in India. If you look at the history, actually India has leapfrogged from being an agrarian society to, an, to a service industry. Somewhere the manufacturing part got missed out in our development. And with the Make in India 1, now you can say Make in India 2.0, manufacturing has got again given, has been given importance. And this is very important because we are looking at the contribution of manufacturing to the GDP of our country, increasing from 17% up to 25%. And this is very important if India has to attain, become a $5 trillion by 2025 or 26. So I think for the German industry also, for the German companies, they are looking at India with optimism and I would just like to end with, uh, we had done a, a business climate survey, uh, Mr. Yamani, and you'd be happy to know that in this business climate survey, 96% of the respondents showed confidence in the Indian market, in the Indian development, in the policies of the government. And in fact, the growth of the German companies in 2021 on an average has been 19%. 
and the forecast for 2022 is 13 percent. This was the status in October. So I think the German industry is very upbeat and very optimistic about the potential and the future in India. Thank you. Substantial numbers of investment in India and your organization represents them. So how German companies or investors are looking at in India? Right. Uh, actually, as you correctly mentioned, Germany has invested more than all the German companies have invested more than 13 billion US dollars in the, if you look at the period 2020 to uh, uh, 2002, 2021. And we have something like around 1700 German companies operating in India. Uh, as VDMA, we are the association of the German machinery and plant manufacturers. And the bilateral trade among the two countries, India and Germany, is just over 20 billion uh, euros. Now, what is important is that the engineering sector constitutes almost one third of this trade. And when we look at export of German machinery to India, it is roughly to the tune you could say in probably in 21, we will reach about 3 billion euros. And when we look at Indian engineering exports, this has been also rising. And I think this is a very good sign because it talks about this is a true concept of bilateral relationship. So we are seeing a very healthy growth also of Indian exports in engineering sector going to Germany. And in fact, this has been rising at a rate of almost 14 to 15% year on year. Of course, 2020 and 21, we have seen a slight dip. And I think this is where there is a lot of potential also for the local industry, the domestic industry in India. Because when foreign companies, any nations come to India, they are also looking at a good supplier base. And I think that is what the German companies have also done here. They have developed a good supply chain, a good supplier network in India. And this is what the companies are also looking to strengthen as they go ahead. Uh, I still remember when I, uh, maybe about two decades back when I started with PDMA, the questions from the German companies used to be, why do we need to come to India? Now it is no more a question of why do we need to come, but how fast can we come to India and where should we establish ourselves in India? And we have seen, I think, over the years also a very healthy development. We saw the companies first coming in more with the sales and service offices. Then it got converted into assembly, now manufacturing. And from the VDMA members, those are the engineering companies in the technology sector, I would say almost 250 companies are manufacturing, are full-scale, large-scale manufacturing in India. And I think the German companies are very optimistic about the growth potential in India. And going ahead, I'm sure we will see much more investments coming from Germany to India. But also the other way around, I see a very good potential for Indian companies also to establish themselves in Germany because Germany is the largest trading partner within the European Union for India and is a good gateway for the Indian companies who are looking to do business in Europe. So I think we are very optimistic and of a very healthy bilateral trade between India and Germany. And I think this will be further strengthened as we come out of the pandemic and as India grows with the growth of at least we are talking about for next year, the government has envisaged eight to eight and a half percent growth. So I think also for the year ahead, World Bank has forecasted um, about seven to seven and a half percent growth. So I think the India growth story is certainly going to be sustained in the future also. Thank you. Uh, effects of uh, COVID because, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, sources of uh, or one of the raw materials is palm oil and we all know the uh, situation of the price of palm oil uh, globally. So, Mr. Nath, how do you see German companies? Did COVID affect their investment decision? Um, I think uh, 
I would not say it has affected the investment decision, but I think a very interesting development we have seen during the COVID period, especially when we look at the uh, development of the German companies here in India. In fact, I would say it started a little before COVID hit us. Uh, and I think it's a very it's a very good development while this will lead to a lot of job generation in India. So, in fact, many of the German companies now are looking to make India, Indian operations as their center of excellence. So, that means they are looking to produce certain machinery here in India. So this type of machinery will be manufactured only in India and will be supplied to their global operations or to their other subsidiaries throughout the globe. And I think this is a very, uh, very good step because not only does this strengthen the presence, domestic presence of the German companies here in India or their Indian subsidiaries. But I think it helps to develop the whole ecosystem of supply chain, which is what actually the government is also looking at. And I think one of the good endeavors of the government is also, as I mentioned earlier, the production linked incentive, because production linked incentive scheme looks to strengthen the domestic manufacturing in India. It is looking at attracting foreign investors to come in India. And the third important aspect is it will help India's contribution in the global value chain. Because at present, actually, our contribution to the global value chain is quite low. And for India really to move up the ladder, from basic manufacturing, if you are looking at, we need to enhance our global value chain. And with the possibility of, of exports, producing good products, quality products in India, you are able to export these products. And I think this will give a good value also to the Indian manufacturers. And I think that's why the, the German companies looking at a strategy of say China plus one, where this plus one, can actually be India. They are looking to increase their sourcing in India to strengthen their local operations in India. And in a way, I think this will help also in a better development of the whole ecosystem as well as creating new job opportunities in India. And maybe I would like to end on one with one more point is the skill development. We have been talking about skill development in India. Skill India has been one of the initiatives of the Indian government. And we have seen also, I'm sure uh, Mr. Ayokawa will also agree that India needs good skilled manpower. And the automotive sector, for example, has been very progressive in this. They have been proactive. But some of the other engineering sectors still need to catch up on this. And I think this is where Actually, the German companies have really taken a lot of initiatives on their own to skill their manpower and to, to take even students to skill them and then to recruit these students. And I think this is very important for India's manufacturing growth because when we are talking about more complex manufacturing processes, we are talking about more automation coming into the country. We are talking about industry 4.0 coming into the country. So for all this, you need to have better skilled manpower. And I think this is really where the contribution of the German companies have been immense in the manufacturing ecosystem in India. Yeah, thank you. I would agree with my earlier speakers, Mr. Ayukhava, as well as Varun, on the challenges that have really impacted India and the Indian industry due to the COVID. We have faced different challenges in each of the waves. In the first wave, of course, it was something that hit us. Nobody knew what COVID was all about. And because of the lockdown, there was actually very difficult for movement of man or machine or material. It was very difficult and there were a lot of uncertainties also. 
then we had, unfortunately, also the people going back to the villages. So workforce was impacted. It took some time for the workforce to come back to the factories. Then the second wave hit us, and that time we were at least more aware about what the impact would be. And luckily, unlike the first wave, India did not have a total lockdown as we had in the first wave. So the second wave, there were more the regional uh, lockdown. So companies were prepared for this. But I think let's take one or two. What have been the big takeaways or impact of COVID? Uh, I think especially when we talk about the engineering or manufacturing industry, the whole concept of work from home was not at all relevant or prevalent in the manufacturing industry. It is something new that we are now faced with. And in fact, now we have emerged from work from home to a more hybrid structure where there is some people are working, the, the uh, factory, uh, the workers are on the shop floor, but certain operations, maybe finance or administration, they are not fully function, they are not fully coming to office or coming on a rotational basis. So I think especially for the engineering industry, this was a big paradigm shift with this work from home or this hybrid structure. But the two years have actually shown us that this hybrid mod module also works well for the engineering industry. Then, of course, I think the second biggest impact what we have seen is the whole concept of automation. Now, with COVID com coming into the country and impacting the business, actually, this has given a boost to automation because not only the large companies, but even the smaller companies like the MSMEs. And uh, Mrs. Yamani, India has actually 63.3 million MSMEs in India. So it's a huge number of mid-sized companies, smaller companies, and 99% of them employ less than 10 people. So I think the shift also has been, earlier we were only talking about automation being relevant for the larger companies. But now we are also seeing the MSMEs actually looking at adopting automation. And I think this is one of the biggest trigger or impact of COVID is that the whole country, I think, would get a boost in automation. And we have also seen endeavors of the government in this budget also. There is a focus on 5G technology. There is a focus on digitization that is coming into the country. In fact, uh, the Indian government has itself set up the center of excellence, four centers of excellence in India for industry 4.0. And I think these are all steps to make Indian manufacturing more resilient, more robust, and more quality conscious. And this will really help in development of the manufacturing industry in India including the MSMEs, which so much need the support, especially in the COVID period. And I think the government has really given a lot of focus in the budget on the MSME sector. And they are the backbone of the Indian economy and the Indian manufacturing. Thank you. So lastly, uh, what do you look forward to from the government in terms of policies and reforms? for their respective, your respective business sectors in the future, uh, whether it's ecosystem, infrastructures, or specific incentives to pull manufacturing in greater numbers? I think from a foreign company's perspective, what do they look at uh, actually when anybody is either operating in India or looking to come to India? Well, some of the basic criteria you're looking at ease of doing business. Now, I think India has done quite well. We have jumped almost 80 positions in the ease of doing business. And uh, before, uh, I think the last uh, ranking was about 60, 63rd. So we have really done very well on the ease of doing business. And this year budget also, uh, Mrs. Yamani speaks of ease of doing business 2.0. So there is a lot of thrust or emphasis on, from the government side on ease of doing business. Secondly, you're looking at regularized taxation policy. And I think that is again also being covered by the government in this budget because the policies should not vary each year to year as it is the Indian taxation is very complex. 
for foreign companies to follow, especially German companies to follow. But of course, with the uh, implementation of GST, this has been a big booster, as well as continuation of the tax policies. I think that is very important. And largely, I think this has also been done by the government. And in fact, it has been quite well. Uh, the government is giving, looking at attracting investment as well as continuing the policies, the taxation policies. However, I would like to touch upon a couple of points what we would look at the government also to do. And I think one, of course, is I would like to highlight the EU India free trade agreement. Now, this has been in discussion for many years. And uh, during the visit of Honorable Prime Minister to Germany last time, there was a talk on restarting the discussion for the uh, free trade agreement. And I think this it is high time now that EU as well as India undertakes the discussion in a more uh, active manner so that we can look at closure of this free trade agreement, which has been in discussion for a long time. Uh, last point I would like to touch is that history has shown that any country thrives when there is an open market. So I think open market is a very important criteria for development of trade amongst any countries. And with the rationalization, we are talking about rationalization of custom duty. Actually, you are trying to close the market, which I think Indian government perhaps has to relook. Of course, protecting the interest of the domestic companies, MSMEs is very important but also opening the trade routes for bigger trades, because that is where actually the bilateral trades, the growth of the country can happen. So I think this would be our my wish list that maybe the government looks at these aspects also. But overall, I think we are certainly on the right track, and especially the endeavors of the government in ease of doing business, uh, as they call, we are talking about uh, uh, they call this uh, uh, this term they have been using trust-based gov governance. I think this is very important if we are talking about trust-based governance and uh, for the development of the foreign companies in India and to attract more foreign investment. I think this is very important and full compliments to the Indian government for this very progressive and I think a very futuristic budget as was mentioned also, we are looking at a, a roadmap or a time map for the next 25 years. I think this is really a very progressive outlook of the Indian government. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting and informative session. And it was really a good opportunity to interact and hear from the industry experts. So with this, we end the panel discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Ayukawa, Mr. Chaudhary, Mr. Nath for your participations.